Employees in small businesses and in offices of professionals often have no voice either, and they're not organized, and because of the small size of the organizations they work in, they fear victimization. The Employment Rights Act offers some protection, but I intend to investigate what more is needed for them to enjoy the rights and freedoms that workers in a collective bargaining unit would enjoy. This is not to say that trade unions won't be needed when the legislation is complete, but rather that the work of the ministry will complement the untiring efforts of our local trade unions. And then there are security guards. Every day I receive a call or I'm stopped to hear a complaint about the conditions of security guards in one firm or another. Their problems will be addressed, starting with a full investigation. So I have my work cut out for me, as I know you have yours cut out for you. The identification of categories of who should be excluded from the scope of the convention, occupational safety and health, social security, and measures to protect workers from the abusive practices of private employment agencies. Some of these requirements will have some influence on existing legislation, particularly the recently proclaimed Safety and Health at Work Act, and the Recruiting of Workers Act, the Immigration Act, and the Employment Exchanges Act. My ministry had already included the creation of new legislation to replace the last three that I mentioned, Immigration, Employment Exchanges, and Recruiting of Workers. And the preparation of drafting instructions has begun to formulate new legislation on employment agencies, and that is currently receiving the attention of the Chief Labor Officer. I'm also working with the Minister in the Prime Minister's office who is responsible for immigration matters as we seek to ensure that work, migrant workers who are here um, have the protection of the law. We also expect that the finalization of legislation dealing with sexual harassment and anti-discrimination in the workplace will redound to the benefit of domestic workers since the baseline study also raised these two matters as issues and challenges faced by domestic workers. I have been advised that the idea of forming a union was not keenly embraced by the employees who participated in the focus groups during the needs assessment component of the project. The draft report emanating from the study indicated that 72% of those persons who were interviewed had no interest in being part of a trade union or any similar network. The domestic employees were emphatic that any challenges which were being experienced could be resolved if provisions were made in our labor laws for domestic workers and guidelines developed to inform standards of work such as the number of tasks to be carried out in a day, the number of working hours, the number of employees for a specific sized house, and the number of days off. They also articulated the need for clearly defined job descriptions and pay that was commensurate with the work being done. These views represent only some of the recommendations of the domestic workers who participated in the study. It is our intention to review all these views and implement whatever measures are necessary for these workers to enjoy the basic rights to which they are entitled.